my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jessie and you're watching. I am so excited about this video. This video is going to be 10 thrillers that I want to read in 2021. Now, these are going to be thrillers that I already own, that I have on my bookshelves, and I just need to get them read. I'm a big fan of reading what I own, and I want to be really a whole lot better about reading the books that I own in 2021, as well as continuing to support my local library, as well as continuing to support the BIPOC authors who are coming out with very, very hypercritical book releases. So I wanted to talk about some of the thriller books that are on my TBR because I got really, really into thrillers last year. I mean, I always have been, but I just really dug into my love of thrillers in 2020, and I really wanna keep that pace going. This year, I'm gonna be focusing a lot on thrillers and adult fantasy on my channel and I'm very, very excited about that. So these are 10 books on my physical TBR that I really want to get to this year. Disclaimer, this list of books is, it's white AF, okay? And <laughs> I just want to say that up front, but I'm really excited because I have a video coming up that is going to be me gushing about all of the BIPOC thrillers that I want to read in 2021. And these are going to be 2021 releases. So I am really, really excited to get those books on my shelves and to get them read. Without further ado though, let's get into the video. Number 11 on this list is Don't Look For Me by Wendy Walker. I read All Is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walker in 2018. And there's never quite been a thriller that got under my skin like that one because it touched on some really personal issues and it was such a brilliant psychological thriller. And what I mean by psychological thriller isn't just that it messes with your head, but that the thriller used a lot of very real psychology. One of the main characters was an actual psychologist. And as somebody who studied psych, oftentimes the label of psychological thriller or the depiction of psychology in thrillers bothers me the way that it's done. I try not to be too nitpicky about it, but it does get on my nerves. And it was just so extremely well done in that book. It talked about memory and grief and trauma. And essentially that was a book about this girl who has something horrible happen to her. And so against her will, her doctors and parents decide to erase the, the traumatic memory from her brain. And it's a book about what happens to the body when the body remembers the trauma, but the brain does not. It was it was such a good book. It was so good. I have to do a review on it some, at some point because I have not reviewed it um, formally on this channel at all. So Don't Look For Me is Wendy Walker's latest novel. And just look, look at the cover. Look at how, look at the rain. With blood let the rain fall. Hilary Duff, no. Let the rain fall down. Wake my dreams, let it wash away and carry me. Oh my God, I used to love her music because I'm gay. This is a story about a woman named Molly Clark who is grieving the loss of her daughter. And one night when she is stranded, in the middle of the road, she accepts a ride from a man that she doesn't know. Now, when she gets into the car and the doors get locked, she realizes that she may have miscalculated. But with this man is a little girl that reminded her of the child that she lost. And that was why, you know, she trusted him enough to get into the vehicle. Now, after the search for Molly has ended, a new lead comes in and her daughter, Nicole, begins to dig deeper into the disappearance of her mother as there are so many things about it that are not making sense. So I misspoke before, her daughter was not dead. <laughs> My bad. This book is supposed to have some wonderful commentary on women being abducted and missing girls. And I, I know even though the premise isn't necessarily original, it's not particularly engrossing. I love this author and I know I've only read one book by her. So I guess it's, this is going to be me figuring out if I love her as much as I think that I do. If she can pull off an incredible thriller once again. We'll see. Number 10 on this list is none other than The Whisper Man by Alex North. My first read of 2021 was The Shadows by Alex North. It was my first of Alex North's works and I was absolutely in love with it. Whisper Man is the debut book by this author and then this was their second book and I just loved it. It was one of those books where you were trying to figure out if the killer is supernatural or 
human. It involved dreams and whether or not these kids are, you know, essentially sharing an effective psychosis, thinking that they share the same dreams and that they can communicate to each other through dreams. Or is this something that's actually happening? And the boys start dreaming up this man named Red Hands who tells them that if they commit brutal murders, Red Hands will, will welcome them into the dreamscape forever. Okay, my nose has been running. I swear I don't have COVID. Um, so if you see me wiping my nose, I'm, I'm not doing cocaine, I promise. That's just too expensive. So excited to dig into this book, which was a gift from my friend Gare. I love you so, so much. In this book, we are following a man named Tom who is grieving after the sudden and abrupt loss of his wife. Of course, the loss of his wife has taken a toll on their young son. And so Tom decides it's time for a fresh start and moves to a new town with his young child. Every horror movie ever starts with somebody moving to a new town with their kid. How about this? If you have a kid, Maybe just don't move. Maybe just stay where you at. I'm just saying. I'm just saying we've seen this movie before. But the town has a dark past. Of course it does. Of course it has a dark past. Why can't anyone ever move to Wonderland? 20 years ago, a serial killer abducted and murdered five residents. And this serial killer was dubbed the Whisper Man because he would lure victims out of their windows by whispering to them. And I'm just gonna say it, those victims all were white, okay? Because there is no way in hell that a black person would be sleeping, just sleeping peacefully. I'm minding my own business. You know, I've got my bonnet on and I hear whispers and I think, oh, you know what would be a good idea? To investigate the whisper coming from outside of my window. Honestly, the reason why white folks have a majority on what constitutes as a thriller and what constitutes as a commercial thriller is because y'all keep making the same stupid ass mistakes and black people, we just watch you do it. We just watch you do it. We get our popcorn and we just let it happen. Okay, so when they move into this new town, a young boy vanishes, which starts rumors once again of the Whisper Man who has now been incarcerated, but perhaps he had an apprentice. And then Tom's son, Jake, begins acting strangely, saying that he has been hearing whispers outside of his window. That's some white people shit, white people shit and I'm so excited for it. Number nine on this list is none other than Final Girls by Riley Sager. This is an author that I've been dying to read because so many of you love Riley's works, rave about Riley's works, and I'm ready to get into them myself. This book was a gift from my bestie for our bestie anniversary. She sent me a bunch of books and I'm really excited to dig into this one because Sager's books are supposed to be so fast paced and just easily digestible and suspenseful. All the things that I'm really wanting in a thriller and this is supposed to be kind of like a slasher thriller, which I... I'm ready. I'm ready for the blood, the gore, the guts, the squeamishness. Give give me all of that. 10 years ago, our protagonist went on a trip with five friends and was the only person to return home. She ends up joining a group for, a kind of support group for girls that have been the survivors of horrible crime. The crime was so great that our protagonist, Quincy, buried all understanding of what happened and those details still have yet to resurface. But when one of the final girls in the group is found dead in a bathtub with, with her wrists slit, it sets off a chain of events where our protagonist has to really struggle to remember what happened at Pine Cottage because her life is in incredible grave danger. I'm excited for this because it sounds fast paced, it sounds bloody and gory, and I'm excited for the commentary on the final girl's trope, which is a trope, a well long running trope that has been popularized since the 80s. A group of individuals going somewhere to a place and they start getting picked off one by one and the survivor girl is the person who lives at the end um, against all odds. You know, this girl finds strength that she herself may not have even known that she possessed in order to be the last one standing. And so I'm really excited about the final girl's trope in this book and to see how that goes. Kayla, if you're watching this, I know you're going to be very excited about this because I have My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing as my seventh book that I would like to get to in 2021. Kayla of Books and Lala, who is a thriller reader that I just absolutely love. She reads other books too outside of the genre, but I just really, really know that she was super, super, into this particular book and I cannot freaking wait. What a cover. What a cover. This book is frequently marketed and described as Dexter meets Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I grew up on Dexter. I loved Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I'm ready. This is a book about two people who are trying to spice up their marriage and they decide the ultimate spice is murder. 
The ultimate spice is murder. Murder is the secret to keeping that relationship alive. Get it? Because you kill people and what keeps you alive is the death of others. It's very poetic. CJ Tudor described this as a brilliant, dark and twisted novel and I'm ready. It's supposed to be disturbing and absolutely unput downable with some great social commentary about relationships and marriage and uh, being dead inside and I'm here, here for it. Number six on this list is a book that I have not seen very many people talk about on book. Actually, what am I saying? I've, I haven't seen no one talk about this on booktube, although I have seen some exciting hype for it over on bookstagram and that book is none other than A Solitude of Wolverines by Alice Henderson. This is a story about a woman who is stranded in the middle of the wilderness and she's fighting for her own survival while also being stalked by somebody who wants to kill her. One of my favorite tropes, one of my favorite tropes is somebody being stuck in the wilderness and having to fight for their life. I stay away from the wilderness and so I like to watch other people go into the wilderness and have adventures that I will never have because I'm a chicken. While studying wolverines on a wildlife sanctuary in Montana, see that was your first mistake, biologist Alex Carter is run off the road and threatened by locals determined to force her from the land. After searches for the unknown man come up empty, local law enforcement is strangely set on dismissing the case, raising Alex's suspicions. Then another invasive predator trespasses onto her preserve. The hunter turns out to be another human and the prey is the wildlife biologist herself. She realizes too late that she has seen too much and has stumbled onto a far reaching illegal operation and now has become its biggest threat. I am very much hoping that there's going to be some environmental social commentary. I'm hoping that it's going to be thrilling and that we get to see some survivalism skills and that this really brilliant woman um, also has to use her wits in order to survive. All of those things culminate in this just fantastic, interesting premise that I, I cannot wait to get into. Are we on five? I think we're on five, but I don't know for sure. So let's just say number five on this list is none other than Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. This is a book that I have seen so much hype for and I'm pretty excited. And this is another book that involves marriage. So another domestic thriller. I'm really bored of the domestic thriller marriage trope within the, within the thriller genre, but I do like to see people doing really interesting things with it, such as in My Lovely Wife. And while the premise of this book isn't necessarily remarkable or particularly original. The reviews about this book are what is keeping it on my TBR and making it one of the most highly anticipated thrillers that I have on my shelves. So this is about a quiet woman who is not at all what she seems. She lives in a small idyllic town where people are going missing. And then when her husband goes missing, she becomes the subject of a lot of scrutiny. This gets even worse when Lila is the last person to see her husband's body and when she goes back to the scene of the crime, it's gone, which really doesn't make her look any better. Mm, I'm excited for it. Number four on this list is a book that everybody and they mama was reading in 2019, and that is You by Carolyn Kepnes. This, of course, is a book that garnered a lot of attention, uh, especially because it was made into a Netflix series, a very bad Netflix series, in my opinion. That show sucks. Okay, and I'm really hoping that the book is going to be better. This is a book that is told from the second person perspective. So this is a story about a man who falls in love with a woman that he's stalking and eventually begins to date her. And she slowly starts to realize this motherfucker is crazy. He's willing to do absolutely anything to keep her, including murder. Now, book number three on this list is one that I have not seen a whole lot of hype for, and I'm guessing that this is because it is a rather backlist title. So I don't know if this book was ever popular on booktube. However, I recently hauled it, and I'm very excited about Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. I adore the cover and this book features one of my favorite tropes in the thriller and horror genres, which is a remote desolate location where somebody has to fight for their life, especially if it involves the water and being set on the water. I don't know why that just intrigues me so much. Again, it's probably because I don't funk with the ocean. I don't funk with large, deep piles pools of water where I can disappear into easily, where something can reach up and grab me. I don't want to feel any seaweed on my toes. I don't want to feel Nemo swimming between my legs. None of that. Like I just don't mess with, <laughs> if I can't see the bottom of the water, I'm not, I, I'm probably not getting into it. This is about a woman named Gina. She's a shy Midwestern housewife with a happy marriage and two loving children and all of that into the air when she finds out that her husband is a serial killer. 
So marriage is not as good as it seems. He ends up being incarcerated and she moves with her children to the Stillhouse Lake. And she decided to escape to this remote place because she's still receiving death threats and internet trolls and um, all this vitriol for people from people who are accusing her of affiliated with her husband's crimes and blaming her for not knowing that he was a serial killer, etc. So she's in this very remote and secluded location when she starts receiving letters, threatening letters from an all too familiar address and a body turns up in the lake. Gwen must keep friends close and enemies at bay to avoid being exposed or watch her kids fall victim to a killer who takes pleasure in tormenting her. One thing is certain, she's learned to fight evil and she'll never stop. Book number two on this list, again, I have no idea if I have counted correctly because I've been putting these books away as I've been talking about them. So if my math is off, Welcome to Messy Jesse. This is my channel. Book number two on this list is none other than The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez, who is the author of Things We Lost in the Fire, another book that I really, really want to read. I have seen amazing, amazing reviews for this book. And just look at this deeply disturbing cover. What more does one want? This is a collection of creepy short stories of the macabre. Populated by unruly teenagers, crooked witches, homeless ghosts, and hungry women, they walk the uneasy line between urban realism and horror. The stories in her collection are as terrifying as they are socially conscious and offer breath and body to much that goes unspoken. Fetish, illness, the female body, the darkness of human history with bracing urgency. A woman is sexually obsessed with the human heart. A lost rotting baby crawls out of a backyard and into a bedroom. A pair of teenage girls can't let go of the- I'm sorry, wait a second. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine waking up and there's just like a, like a creepy baby crawling into your bed to cuddle with you? Oh my God, that sounds so disturbing. Okay, can somebody write a story about a baby who is abandoned? Okay, and then the baby crawls out of the grave and it just is seeking somebody to love it. And so it just, okay. A pair of teenage girls who can't let go of their idol, an entire neighborhood is cursed to death when it fails to respond correctly to a moral dilemma. Honestly, this sounds like peak social commentary. It's giving me early science fiction social commentary vibes. It is giving me Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado vibes. I am so excited about this book. And this arguably could go my number one slot. <sighs> I'm so freaking excited. The number one thriller that I want to ensure that I read in 2021 is none other than Mallory by Josh Mallerman, the sequel to The Bird Box. Now the reason that this is in my number one slot is because I read Bird Box at the start of the year. I read Bird Box at the start of the year. It blew my freaking mind. I saw the movie when it came out. I thought it was great, but I wasn't moved enough or really interested enough to seek out the book because if I'm gonna be honest, I assumed that the book wouldn't be as good as the movie, which is an assumption I never make. We all know that books are better than the movie. I don't know why I assumed this. Um, perhaps it was just because I enjoyed the movie so much. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was my own snobbery. I don't know. I read this book and I freaking loved it. And a part of the reason why I love it so much is because I didn't think that I would. And so each, now on top of that, the suspense, the horror, the world building, all of that was magical. It was phenomenal. It was creepy. I was disturbed and on the edge of my seat. I was guarded. My my haunches were up throughout the entire, entire book. Nothing. There are very few books that are as great an example of suspense as this one is, in my opinion. The storytelling, the writing, the character work, the mystery, all of that was phenomenal. So if you're not familiar with Bird Box, this is a book about these creatures that come to earth and if you look at them, you lose your mind and kill yourself. So nobody has actually seen these creatures because nobody has seen them and lived. The world has been absolutely destroyed by this. People are afraid to go outside. They can't look out their windows. They can't even drive in a car. And so what, and the only way to, sur to survive is to either blind yourself or to live blindfolded. And people are trying to go about their lives with blindfolds on. It is an incredible survival story. I really loved it. And the sequel came out last year, I believe. I am dying to read it. So Mallory is going to be 
definitely my top release of the year. All right, so those are the thriller books that I am going to be reading in 2021. Stay tuned for my BIPOC thriller releases video where I'm going to be talking about all of the amazing thrillers that Black, Indigenous, people of color writers are coming out with in 2021. That's gonna do it for this video. If you would like more content from me, subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Instagram. All my social media links are in the description box below. Stay safe, wear your mask, and I hope to see you in my next video. If you made it this far in the video, let me know by telling me of a thriller that you are absolutely dying to read this year, pun intended, or you can drop a raindrop emoji in the comment section because of the rain. Let the rain fall on, on this cover.